right, guys, we've made it to the end of the first nine weeks. Crazy as time's flying by. All right, so we're looking in Google Classroom for week nine. We have been busy, busy, busy today. Notice that there's a distance learning questionnaire. It's real quick, um, just to give us some feedback on different programs and applications that we have used or are thinking about using, just to give us some feedback from the student side about um, do you enjoy that one? Is it easy for you to use? Is it effective? So be real honest in your feedback on the questionnaire. It won't take very long to fill out. Today we took temperature notes. Hopefully you've already finished your ed puzzles um, over the different things in temperature, like there is no such thing as cold. So some of them may have like blown your mind. Okay, so if you haven't done the ed puzzles, you might want to watch them first. But I'll show you the temperature notes, and they are already in my science notebook. Okay, um, we're going to practice reading thermometers. There's a temperature quizzes, just to practice with some of your knowledge. And you'll see an optional activity. Um, in class, we looked at ice melting, which may not sound that exciting, but you've never sat giving it your full attention. Um, but this optional at home activity is obviously optional, but it's about what will freeze faster, cold water or hot water. So those things are in there for you. Okay. So in our science notebook, um, let me go to my file. You know, you may need to wrap up your physics stuff and make sure that everything's in there. Like if you have the paper copy of the review, you can fold it in half and just put a little piece of tape to keep from losing it. Um, with the physics test, if you um, needed to do the retest because you didn't make at least a 70, use the things that you wrote down. Go back over your mistakes on the Google form and see where did you go wrong. Was it a simple, oops, did you not write out the formula and plug the numbers in? Go through your mistakes there. Okay. But we're going to make a new divider in our notebook. Remember, we fold this little triangle. The title is energy. The topics we'll be covering you have done in elementary school. We're just going to level it up and add some fancy words. Okay, we're just going to take what we already know and build on it. So we make the triangle divider. And this is just, you know, a quick sketch of what we did in class. Basically, take a cup of ice in a glass cup and sketch it and make some observations about it. So we noticed that our cup was made of glass, it was solid, the glass was room temperature, well, like when we got it out of the kitchen cabinet, it was dry. Things about the ice, like the shape of your eyes, solid state of matter. You know, if you have a thermometer that you could put in, great. But otherwise, you could say that it was feels cold, even though we don't have a quantitative number. And then roughly every, you know, five or ten minutes, we would look at the cup and notice the subtle differences that were happening, like the change in the shape of the ice or how its volume was decreasing and there became more and more water and how condensation was forming on the outside. Okay, so you can do that on your own. Um, one of my students had a brilliant idea and I had him time lapse his cup. So you should be getting me that file and I'll post it as soon as I can. But we just go through in every 10 minutes, so just make observations about it. It's one of those things that's in our everyday life that we just haven't given it a lot of attention, but will help us understand this concept of temperature and thermal energy. Okay, your temperature notes. In classroom, I have put, oh, wrong one. I have put this file, so if you have access to a working printer, awesome. Print this out and just write on it. And we can fold it in half and put it here. Otherwise, take these temperature notes, and I'll walk them through in a second, and fill them in on that next page of your science notebook. Okay, so you might want to get it all filled in um, first before I would talk about it. So you might want to push pause and go ahead and write it all down so you can focus on what I'm saying as far as the instruction piece. Okay, so I took a picture of it. So there it is. So now would be the time to push pause. Okay, I'll come back to this in just a second. After we took down these notes, we're going to practice reading thermometers. Most of the thermometers in our life now are digital, either the kind um, that goes under the tongue or the kind that goes in your ear, the kind that touches your forehead. But we need to understand how a thermometer works to understand some of the concepts um, in temperature and thermal energy. Okay, So we talked about how to read it. Now your temperature practice is a separate thing in the classroom. And you'll have six total thermometers, these three and then these three. Notice on each one, there's a Fahrenheit scale and a Celsius scale. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the notes and I'll come back to this part. Okay. All right. So we need to make sure we know the difference 
between temperature and thermal energy. Okay, so if you watch the Ed Puzzles, they went into depth on these two words. Right, first off, we measure temperature with a thermometer. Literally, it's a thermometer. It measures thermal energy. Right? And we know the temperature, sorry, me and the document camera are fighting. It's the measure of average kinetic energy. Remember, we've already done that this year. That's motion. The particles are moving of all the particles in a substance. Okay, and that's the way we phrase it. It sounds more scientific and intelligence is just saying all the pieces of stuff, right? See the difference? So it's the average kinetic energy. So all particles are moving. So think about water. You can have solid water, which is ice. You can have liquid water, which is water. And you can have steam, which is the gas version of water. It's all the same chemical. It's all H2O. It's just how fast the particles are moving. Okay, so think about when you do different races, like Pacer or whatnot. There's a couple of really fast kids and there's a couple of slow pokes right maybe you have a bad knee or whatever um, and but the majority kind of run is this amoeba the whole group of most of the kids around the track temperature is kind of the same way you take an average of all those people the super fast ones the slow pokes and the majority in the middle the molecules are the same way so think about like ice melting if you're watching it it doesn't all melt instantly in one moment a little bit at a time okay so within any object you've got a couple of outliers okay but it's an average so you total them all up and you divide by the total okay versus thermal energy which is all of it totaled up okay? and in the videos they talked about the difference between like hot cocoa and an iceberg all right so obviously the hot cocoa is hotter so it'd have a higher temperature but there's more excuse me particles in an iceberg and just because there's more of them, you will have more energy because there's more particles. It's kind of like saying I have um, hot cocoa. All right, let's say it's a dollar bill. All right, I got a dollar. Maybe. But an iceberg, maybe I just have a penny. But I have a thousand pennies. Well, a thousand pennies is going to be way more than one dollar. Okay. So kind of think of it like that. Or if you'd rather think of um, like a mug of hot cocoa versus a swimming pool full of hot cocoa, which would be a total mess, so roll with it. But they would both have the same temperature, but they'd have different thermal energies because there's more particles in the swimming pool than there are in the mug. Okay, So these are two words we need to get straight in our head. All right. And we also need to talk about the temperature scales, like how we do temperature, how we talk about it. Because we live in, you know, 2020 when there's five bajillion different digital thermometers, um, we need to think back to a time when there weren't any. Like if I ask you to wherever you are, describe the temperature of the room you're in, we might get kind of cool, it's a little bit warm, it's kind of stuffy. Those are all descriptive words. That cool to me might be warm to you. So we want to be quantitative, so we have to have a tool, like a thermometer, to help us out. Okay. So in the history of thermometers, first up, is Mr. Fahrenheit. So look when this guy was alive. That was quite a while ago. He couldn't like Google answers or Zoom with his friend in another country to discuss it. Okay. So he's a German physicist and he invented thermometers. So just the tool that we take for granted. Um, and it basically it's usually a glass tube with the inside filled with something. Now you can't use water. You would think water is abundant. Easiest thing to find. Let's use some water. Water is weird. Okay, it is wackadoodle-doo, and if it wasn't, life on Earth wouldn't be possible. But if you've ever left, you know, a soda in the freezer a little too long, like you wanted to get it cold fast, but then you forgot about it, and it bursts, and there's a big mess in the freezer, you know that water expands when it gets cold. That's weird. Most things in existence shrink when they're cold because the little molecules are not moving around as much. So think about like your jewelry in the wintertime might fly off your finger. Think about like weathering erosion that you learned about in elementary school, like swelling and then contracting of the rocks. Right? So these two chemicals have a very consistent expansion rate. Okay, and this alcohol is not like drinking alcohol, not like vodka or whatnot. This is this is a family of chemicals. Right. Another type that you would know is like the rubbing alcohol or the isopropyl alcohol that goes um, like they rub on your arm before you get a shot or a vaccine. Okay. And then mercury, which you know is the metal that's a liquid at room temperature, 
which we now know can cause mercury poisoning, um, and they don't use it in thermometers anymore. Okay. And if you have time, ask me about Alice in Wonderland, and I'll tell you a story about mercury. Okay, but I'm real limited on this video. Um, so we use in the U.S. Here's the melting and freezing point. Okay, he divvied up into 180. Now, where to get the 180? Because that's half of a circle, so it's a straight line. You know, that's where I like, think about what a thermometer looks like. Now, notice a little bit later, along comes Mr. Celsius, and he improves upon Fahrenheit's model, because that's what scientists do. They take something, and they make it better. This is what the entire world uses, except us, and the entire scientific community. You may hear it called centigrade, centi mean 100, but this is the metric unit for temperature. We divvy it up to 100, because it's centigrade. And these are way easier numbers to remember, don't you think? But then there's one more, you're like, what's wrong? We still use Celsius. What's wrong with it? Nothing is wrong with it. But if you think about the concept of temperature and it being an average of the kinetic energy of the particles moving, why do we have negative numbers? It's hard enough with number scales, you know, in math class. So to think about having a negative temperature when really what you're doing is measuring motion, you can't have a negative particle motion, right? So Kelvin came along. He's Lord Kelvin, that's his title. That's what that was circled for. Um, and started it at zero. And so there wouldn't be any negatives. And there's no particle motion, then it would be zero Kelvin. Uh, and it can go only up from there. So that gives us this concept of absolute zero, which labs are trying to achieve. And they are within fractions of a degree of doing so. But it's one of those theoretical improbabilities because there's always something touching something else, touching something else. So that thermal energy gets conveyed from something warmer to something cooler, all right? But that's zero Kelvin, all right? So you've got the notes, all right? And then you're going to do the practice. So you can look back and see how I set up doing the temperature practice and how to read a thermometer. So that is here. But when you look at it, notice the big numbers. Think of this like a ruler, but vertical instead of horizontal. Okay, look at the big numbers and look for the difference between them. So 100 minus 90 is 10. And then I count these little bitty lines, and there are five of them. You may know Ms. Bounty, there's four, but you have to count the 100 as well, just like you would on a ruler. So there's five lines between them. So how much is each little line worth? So 10 divided by five is two. So every little line here on Fahrenheit is two. Same thing on Celsius. Okay, 40 minus 30 is 10. But you're like, wait a second, it was 10 over here on Fahrenheit, correct? But see how the spacing is different? That's because Celsius is divvied into 100 pieces. Fahrenheit is divvied up into 180. All right, so they're much smaller because there's more. Think about a pizza. The more you cut it up, the smaller the slices are. Okay. Um, so you do the same thing. That was 40 minus 30 is 10, and there's five little lines. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. So also on the Celsius scale, it goes by 2. So you're going to look at the top of that little red line and determine for scale or temperature, I can't talk y'all, thermometer number one, what is the temperature in Fahrenheit, what is the temperature in Celsius. Okay, so do it for each of the six. Sometimes it might be between two lines. Okay, well, if they're going by twos, if you're between two lines, that's the whole number one. Okay, I will post the key for you to check yourself as well. Okay, but go ahead and practice on these six and write your answers. Nope, wrong one in your science notebook. There we go, Melanie. Okay, write your answers in your science notebook. So you have two measurements, one Fahrenheit, one Celsius, on each of them. Okay, I'll post the key for you to check it. You've got a temperature quizzes that you can practice with, right? And then this is obviously optional. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to come to tutoring. The schedule and the time, the Zoom links are all in classroom. Thanks, guys.